Hey, what's up, guys? This is Team Hard Life Captain Albert Sarkuchi, and that was a very introduction to the actual video. And you can tell radio was going before I put the actual end cap of the underwater go fish camera on there. And yes, that is a live crawfish. We are going for big black drum, and this is also one of the lenses that has got the orange film on there. So we're gonna go ahead and check it out. And yes, the green light is on. You can see it reflecting in the water right there, right before I cast. So we are fishing in the channel, anywhere from two foot to 15 to 25 foot. So we're gonna put it out there and see what we can get. And maybe we can get a big drum on it. Let's see what the dealio is on this one. See right there is so cool because he is still alive and this would give us an idea of how they feed on these crawfish. Um, we've heard a bunch of old timers saying they used them and other guys as well nowadays still using them. I know during um, one of the tournaments at Goose Island a few of the guys that caught some of the bigger size drum were also using live crawfish. So I'm seeing if maybe it can work for us here too. And it's pretty cool because right here I have not slowed it down. It is doing what it naturally does. Um, and I'm kind of pointing that out because right here the current isn't hardly moving. So it's given us a lot of action right there and being able to see what's really going on. So let's see what he actually does under there. I've always I've been real curious about this.
So if you look to the right side of the screen on the bottom, look, he, he puts up his arms and it moves away. What was there? Golly. He definitely, he definitely knows something's there and that's why he's picking up his arms. Hmm. What is it? What is spooking him right there? Hmm. He definitely ain't backing down, that's for sure, which is pretty cool. Let's see what he see what he else he does, you know. And it's awesome that the current ain't going crazy, because we can actually see what's going on, and he ain't getting beat up too bad by the current. But he definitely is towing around the hook, moving around and stuff, as you saw my surfway pass by a little while ago. So we'll see what ends up happening. Yes, that is a freshwater crawfish. We are saltwater fishing with it. And yeah, just that's something that just crossed my mind. I figured I'd share it. Probably be one of the questions that would be asked. So let's keep it rocking.
Well, I know that, you know, as you cook crawfish, you add salt water to the fresh water or salt to the fresh water to make them purge and stuff, you know. And, yeah, they kind of stay alive, but I didn't know if they would continue to survive, especially in this high salinity here, using it in salt water right there. And Or what he would do. I mean, would he try to bury himself? Um, would he just give up and die quickly? There was a lot of things that, you know, it was open-ended questions that we had no idea about. And then, I don't know what's going on with my line, but, you can see something's messing with my line there. And that's part of the camera. That's the 400-pound test I have on a three-way swivel. But what is going on? Why is it doing that? Hmm. That crawfish senses something. He's, he's definitely trying to get away from it. But why is that doing that i don't remember what was going on on the boat because we were on a boat at the time when this was going on so i'm sitting here trying to put two and two together as to why the rod would be shaking like that
Well, we definitely knew the water would be a little brownish. So with the orange film on there and the underwater light going, it is giving us a little green distortion there, but we are seeing very clearly under the water here. Um, now, after talking with Goldfish Camera the other day, we are looking into changing this whole testing process which may really help us, but we are really going to have to um, knuckle down and keep track of uh, the sun, cloudy, overcast, high current, no current, you know, what water depth we we're fishing at or attempting to, at least if we could know exactly where we're at on that. That would be awesome. Hmm. Where did the line slack up there? Oh, probably the barge moving through. That can be the only thing that I can think of because you see the current change and now it's also picked up a little bit more pace as well too. Ooh, what was that in the background? Did you see that? Oh, that wall. Did you see that shrimp? Holy smokes. Hold on. I got to get that one again. Look at that size of that shrimp as he comes over that crawfish. Oh man, that's a big old one. Wow. Amazing he didn't go after the crawfish. I figured that he would have did the same thing like they did to the the sea lice that we were using in, or the mantis shrimp. The last time we were using them with the underwater camera at night, these big old colossal sized shrimp were coming up and just attacking the sea lice underwater while it was on the camera and they were actually trying to swim off of the thing. So that was pretty interesting, but this one just came up on him and swam away. Hmm. Wow, that, oh man, that, that made me hungry right now. That really did.
so even as now as we would normally say oh the fish just ain't there you know we can actually say yeah the fish ain't there because we ain't seen the shadow pass by we ain't seen shoot not even bait fish have come up and mess with this thing hmm. i don't know it still leaves a lot of room for questions and what am i doing here i think i'm checking the bait See how it looks, see if he's still um, alive when we bring him to the surface. Because for uh, the last portion there, he was out of camera, basically. We couldn't really tell. Oh, yeah, he's still alive. Look at him. He is furious. He's like, what are y'all doing with me? Put me back there in the water. I want to go back in the water. So, kind of one of my best Cajun, Cajun talks there. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh. So that's how I lost the crawfish. Dang it. That is not cool. Wow, that really sucks. I was so looking forward to... So hey, hey, hey. Hey, that's mine. That's mine. Look at that. Look at that. Hey. Hey, that's a big old blue crab right there. Oh, that's a, that's a massive blue crab right there. What is he doing? Does he want the camera? What is he going to do? There's no bait there. He definitely knows it's not supposed to be there. So he, he he's like, what are, you, what are you doing here? Why, why are you in my backyard? My backyard. Yeah. You don't let me catch you around these parts. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at him. God, that was a big old blue crab. Oh, man. That would have been so awesome to see that. Yeah, he would have destroyed that crawfish. It would have been crazy. Oh, man. I had such high hopes for that bait going out and just going to see how long it could last on there. And so what I went ahead and did was I went ahead and fast forwarded it on the last bit here just so you can get an idea of what the um, camera could do as in having the light on and that's the other thing too for me it's testing the timing of how long it takes to kill the camera when the uh, underwater light is on and that's a big thing for me because knowing the time of how long it takes for me to be able to run the underwater light keep track of it uh, when it's in the water too because obviously i don't want it in the water longer than necessary to get whatever video i can get and then get it off because you know fishing is fishing we do get cut off we do lose gear and tackle out there so yes i want it in the water as long as possible but not longer than necessary because obviously once um the camera dies and i move it off and put bait on i also can get further on my cast too so that's gonna be something that i'm looking forward to to maybe setting it up to where maybe adding a little more weight to this and making it a little more aerodynamic might allow me to actually fish it a lot better get further cast on it um better distance and you know it's just um it's a work and play so that that is for sure the only bad thing about putting weight to it is means that it's going to be sitting closer to the ground unless I can figure a way to where the weight offsets the camera and keeps the camera off the bottom but still makes it my stopping point there. So it's something I'm looking into most definitely. I want to uh, ensure that we're not just looking straight at the floor at uh, all times but also too I realize if I throw it to where it's um in line with my bait here that i don't want it sitting on the bottom floor but also too i'm looking at other ways that other guys are using the go fish cameras and they're actually suspending them above their baits i just I, I, it scares me knowing that it's like that over here because i could lose it to a boat or something else so <coughs> I am most definitely going to be looking into different ways to do this. And if you're new to the channel, this is part of our underwater library where we're testing out different kind of baits, tactics, and just um, right now we're trying to figure out why 
we get so much uh, light distortion and we found out from goldfish that it the sensors in there are picking up any little bit of light that is reflective or reflected off the bottom you know from the sunlight that penetrates so that's why a lot of times we see a lot of green haze there but I am uh, adding uh, different types of orange tint on here in order to curve the brightness on there so that way we can actually see kind of the way it is here on camera now you know there's a piece of seaweed in there which normally would have blurred the camera right there because it would catch all the green coming off the actual night vision camera light and it would blur, blur the whole camera out so we couldn't see anything but so with the orange there I can definitely see that it's given us a good vantage point of being able to see what we're trying to see with the green light on but also too it is during the daylight and the water ain't too murky so it's given us a good field of vision there and stuff I mean we had a big old crab come try to eat it right as soon as he went in the water that would have been epic but I mean yeah that crawfish wouldn't have stood a chance with that big old blue crab right there but it would have been interesting to see and how it would have reacted so stay tuned guys we got a lot more coming off this channel.